comes to spreading fertilizer, there are a few different things you could do. You could broadcast spread across the whole field, or you could band and put it right where you're going to plant your row crops. So if you're planting corn or soybeans like we are in our farm in 30 inch rows, why in the world should you broadcast that fertilizer over the whole field? Why not just put it right where your crop's going to be? Well, there are a lot of reasons why you might consider this. Time savings is number one. If you say, I got all this stuff to do on the farm, I gotta get this job done and fast, you can broadcast spread very quickly. You can go as fast as you can possibly drive that tractor, as fast as you can stand it. <laughs> this sounds uh, like a job Brian would enjoy. <laughs> if he could go a little bit faster, if we could do it a little quicker, that's always a good thing. <laughs> yep, I mean, it might only take us three or four hours to spread out a whole semi loads worth of fertilizer. So if we wanted to put in a really big day, we could spread 50 or 75 tons worth of fertilizer without even any problem. Well, the other side of broadcast spreading is it's really cheap to do. If you want to get set up with a spinner spreader, you can find a used one, maybe as cheap as four or $5,000. You can buy a brand new one for eight, 10, $12,000. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can go out, get the job done quickly. You know, that part's all good. But for me, I'm looking at long-term and I'm also looking at cost savings whenever I can and being more efficient on the farm. Well, that's why I really have been leaning towards banding for fertilizer and that's the way we've been moving. Yep, but we're still doing a bunch where we are broadcasting and one of the reasons why we're doing that is long term in fields we want to see if there's really a difference between broadcast and between banding because what we've been told and what a lot of studies will show is that you can get by with about half the amount of phosphorus and potassium in a band situation versus broadcast and still get similar yields. Well on our farm we have found that to be true over about the last nine or ten years we've taken some fields and we've done broadcast every single single year. We've taken other fields and done band every single year and we have reduced the P and the K by 50%. 50%, that's a lot. I mean, you talk about the difference in cost every year, we're saving, it depends on the price of fertilizer, it might be only $20, but like last year, it was closer to $100 an acre, <laughs> and we spent less, and yeah. we have ended up with the same yield. So, you know, over the long term though, we are building the soil fertility in those broadcast fields, so eventually those fields might yield higher, but after nine or 10 years, they're still not yielding any higher. Well, growing, so. growing up, our dad always told us putting out P and K fertilizer, phosphorus and potassium is like putting money in the bank. You're putting it out on ground that you own or you're going to farm long term. You know what? If you don't take it all into the crop this year, it's going to be there for the long term. And that's fine. But I like to take a withdrawal out of the bank well, occasionally. The way I look at it is it's about like putting money in the bank because right now you get about a quarter percent interest on that money. <laughs> and that's about all we're getting. We're, I mean, hey, we now, saving is a good thing. Saving is a <laughs> well, good thing. Well, it is. But I'm I'm just saying, when is this return going to start coming? Because after nine or 10 years of spending more dollars every single year on those broadcast fields, we still don't have higher yields. Don't get me wrong. We're putting a lot of money into our banded fields. It's not like we're using half the recommended rate. We're still using a full rate of fertilizer where we're banding. It's just that we're using a 50% higher rate. In other words, what the normal recommendation is, we're using 50% higher than that in the broadcast because we understand the inefficiencies of broadcast fertilizer, we want to make absolutely sure the plant's got enough fertility. Well, that's the big thing. You look at broadcast fertilizer, it's cheap to get in. The equipment to get in to do it is relatively cheap and it's very fast. You can do the job fast. So it's fast and it's cheap. Well, there's got to be some drawback somewhere and that's where it is. The efficiency of getting those nutrients into your crop, you do need to put on a higher rate when you're going to broadcast versus band. So let's talk about banding. Where do we want to band? How deep do we need to be? Yep. Uh, what kind of guidance do you need to be able to do that? Okay, let's, let me just give you some general statements here. First of all, if you have lighter soil, you have to have your fertilizer further away from the seed. The heavier your soil and the more rainfall you get, the closer that fertility can be to the seed without as much risk. Now, we're in an area where we only get about 22 or 23 inches of total annual precipitation, and our soil is moderately heavy, but we do have some lighter ground. So we're a little concerned about how much fertility we get out there, because keep in mind, every year our yields keep going higher, higher, higher. In other words, our fertilizer needs are higher, higher, higher. So we're putting a lot of fertility out there. We wanna have a good gap between where the fertilizer is and where the seed is. So what we like doing is going out with a knife and putting that fertilizer down in strip till where we're banding about 10 inches deep. 
so we're gonna be about eight inches below the seed. We believe that is a great way to go, especially because in the past, we have really seen a stratification of nutrients. We've broadcast a lot of fertilizer, we've done a lot of no-till, so a lot of our fertilizer's in the top three inches of soil. We wanna get more fertility down deep in the soil, so that's why we wanna use a knife and get it down deep, as compared to some of these strip-till machines that just use coulters. Well, by putting it down deeper in the soil, we're speeding up nature because phosphorus and potassium move down through the soil profile so slowly. You know, an eighth of an inch, maybe even a quarter inch a year on the high side, that's it. So if you're putting it down 10 inches, you're speeding things up 20, 30, 40 years it would take those nutrients to move At down least. on their own. So for us, that's one good thing. The other good thing is we're in typically fairly dry country. And when soil dries out in the summer, it's the top few inches that dry out first. If all our fertility is there, our roots are unable to bring it into the crop. So by putting our fertility down a little bit deeper, that part of the soil profile down 10 inches is gonna stay moist for a long time in the summer. It's gonna take a real prolonged drought before 10 inches deep is all completely dry. That allows our crop to pull those nutrients in all through the season. Plus, when it's pulling in plenty of nutrients down deep, that crop doesn't have to use as much water. So it's a little more water efficient and our fertilizer is down there that we can get it all summer. There are a lot of good things with banding. Well, once again, broadcast versus banding, it's a big question. We do, in a lot of cases, recommend banding because you can get by with less fertility. Just don't use way less than what normal recommendations would be. You've still got to look at how many nutrients a crop removes and at least replace that. Otherwise, you're going to be falling behind every year. But you will get better efficiency out of a band, it's a good way to go, especially in the short term. The other thing too along those lines is when you're banding in the fall, you can follow those bands in the spring. Say you're strip tilling, you can do that without satellite guidance and, and try to stay right on those rows, but it's not that easy. It's a lot easier if you do have some kind of guidance system. You can buy RTK GPS guidance now for somewhere in the $10,000 range. So the price of GPS guidance has come down a lot. Use the sub-inch accurate RTK guidance to follow those bands in the spring and you'll get the most efficiency out of that banded fertilizer. Well, whether you have RTK guidance or not, you still should be able to control our weed if you use the right products. We'll tell you what to use coming up later in the show.